Hi, I'm Abel Tamás, and I work at the Department of Comparative Literature and Cultural Studies at Ötvös Lorend University Budapest, and I also teach at the Department of Latin. In general, I'm interested in Latin literature, in the reception of Latin literature, and the interpretation of Latin poems and prosaic texts. But this time, I would like to tell you about a new research interest of mine, which is acrostics and talastics in Latin literature. Now, I would like to show you two examples, two case studies from this field of research. The first is an Ovidian talastic. You know, Ovid was uh, the poet of the Augustan age, a very popular poet, and he wrote the Metamorphosis, the big mythological epic of this time. In the first book of the Metamorphosis, Ovid tells us about the destruction of the first humankind, the first human race, by the gods. So, and after this destruction, the flood, Deucalion and Pura are instructed by the gods to throw stones behind their backs. And these stones will be transformed into human bodies. And these human bodies will be the new human kind, the new human race. And in the passage where Ovid describes this process, so the transformation of the stones into bodies, you find a talastic which spells somata. This means bodies in Greek. So what happens here? In the passage where you read about the, the transformation of stones into bodies, you see the last letters of the passage to be transformed into somata, which means bodies. So the same thing happens in the story and in the text. It was very interesting that when I discovered this talastic and wrote an article about that and submitted it to a classics journal, they replied immediately that, okay, it's very interesting, but at the same time, another researcher from a different country discovered the same talastic, and we just accepted his manuscript for publication. For me, it was a bit disappointing, but at the same time, very interesting that two researchers, independently of each other from different countries, after uh, 2,000 years after uh, the poet's death, discovered the same small talastic in his metamorphosis. The other case study, the other example, is a Catulan acrostic. So Catullus, in his poem 14, attacks his friend Calvus, the poet. This is a friendly attack because Calvus is a, is a friend of Catullus, but in, his, in this poem, poem 14, Catullus attacks him. This is a very aggressive invective against his friend. And in the last lines, where this attack is really aggressive, you can find an acrostic which spells suavis which means sweet. So what happens here? If you want, by this acrostic, Catullus transforms this very negative message into a positive one, or transforms his invective into a friendly joke. It's very interesting to see that in this way, Catullus is able to counterbalance his negative message with a positive one, and thus, we can see the poem in a new light. Why am I interested in acrostics and talastics in Latin literature? I could mention many reasons, but this time I would mention only three of them. The first is that these things are playful. And in these dark times, you know, the pandemic and the war in Europe and everything, sometimes it's very good to be interested in playful and funny things. The second reason is that you know there is a growing pressure in the field of humanities that you have to discover things, always discover and discover. And by these discoveries of acrostics and talastics and similar uh, word plays and word and letter plays, we classicists can show that, okay, we are able to discover things, but at the same time, we integrate, we incorporate 
these discoveries into our interpretations. And this is very important to me, that at the end of the day, the interpretation will be the main thing. The third reason is that in the last decades, literary scholars became more and more interested in the text as a medium, in the mediality of texts. And by the discovery of acrostics and telastics and similar phenomena, we classicists are able to show that Greek and Roman poets, so ancient poets, were very sensitive to the iconic, the pictorial dimension of textuality. They considered the text not only as a visible form of speech or language, but they were aware that the text as a medium has a visual and iconic dimension and they used it in a very clever way.